Draw Every Day with JJK. Hey everyone, welcome back to Draw Every Day with JJK. I am back. Here's what happened. I, you know, I wanted to give the show a brief pause and then I just found I was a little bit exhausted. I had been doing the show just about every single day uh, since the middle of March and I needed to take a moment for myself and then I realized in that moment I needed to take a second moment and a third moment. So that just happens and you have to know your body and know your space as an artist. And I just needed to chill some. Also, I do have books that I need to make. And uh, my editor was all like, I, you know, YouTube videos are great, but we do need to get these deadlines met so that we could actually publish the books, which is understandable, right? But I have missed making Draw Every Day with JJK. I have missed seeing all of you. And I, I've been hosting some camps over Zoom. I have also uh, been visiting some public libraries over Zoom. I'm getting ready to visit schools this fall over Zoom as well. Uh, but I am rededicating myself to Draw Every Day with JJK. I have no intentions on stopping forever. I just needed a little bit of a break enjoy some sun, get some artwork done for these books, spend some time with my family. Uh, but here we are. Here's what we're going to do going forward. Two episodes per week. I want to make sure that these episodes are top notch. I want to make sure that I'm giving you my all. And I think that is what I'm going to be able to do in a way that uh, is meaningful for, for everyone. And so this is going to be the rhythm of what we do uh, in, the, in the two episodes we make each week. One day will be a lesson. The second day will be uh, a community draw. And so the grown-ups, well, it's going to be via the grown-ups. You know, the, the, this will be your ideas, friends. So you're, you will be giving your grown-ups ideas. They will be getting the messages to me. I will throw some stuff out there on my social media platforms for the grown-ups to, to write, uh, you know, different animals, uh, different jobs, different magical powers. I'm going to put those ideas in jars. I'm going to pull those ideas to come up with characters, but I'm not going to draw them for you right away because I want to see how you all draw them and then without knowing how I draw them. See, that's the beautiful thing about being an artist is everyone will have their own way of seeing stuff, their own way of envisioning things. So we're going to start that in the second episode this week. I'll pull the things and you'll see. Just, just hang tight. You'll get into this rhythm. I have a little bit of a different setup I have this little doohickey here that I can have the camera on my other phone go up or down or closer to the drawing. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get in my way too much, uh, but I think it'll make for a more engaging uh, way to produce the show. And as you can tell, I am energized to make more episodes, uh, despite the fact I still have a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee, how are you doing today? We're doing this again? Ugh. Yes, well, uh, I'll, uh, even though the weather's nice, uh, some of us are still dragging. Cheers. And, uh, okay, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the tools of the trade. And by that I mean, what kind of tools do I use when I'm making my comics? The professional comics that have been published, like the Jedi Academy books, like the Lunch Lady books. I'm going to show you the tools that I use to make these books. Oops. Okay, so you see me fidgeting with this thing here. It looks like clay here. Let me get it up here on this. This is not clay. This is called a kneaded eraser, spelled K-N-E-A-D-E-D, -E -E kneaded. Not as in I needed another cup of coffee, but kneaded as in to knead clay. And I, I love it. It's a good little fidget thing. Uh, it's a wonderful eraser. Uh, I use a kneaded eraser. I also use a non-photo blue pencil. It is called non-photo blue. It's not any old blue. It is non-photo blue. And I'll explain to you more in a bit what that means. And I used Bristol board. Bristol board is a, a, a kind of art paper that cartoonist use. Uh, it's thick enough to absorb the ink, but thin enough to wobble. And it makes a great wobbling sound. Ready? 
like that's that's a good it's this is going to be the whole show just me wobbling the bristle board okay and because i'm going to use ink i use indie ink now this this is serious business in the ink this will stain anything it lands on so please be aware of that uh, young artists and grown-ups India Ink, there's all different kinds of brands. This is all stuff you can get at your local art supply store. Because what I do, when I create the finished line work, I use a brush dipped into India Ink. And sometimes I'll use a Micron pen. So to review, kneaded eraser, non-photo blue pencil, India Ink, brush, marker, Bristol board. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture for you. I'm gonna draw a picture of Lunch Lady and Betty and the Breakfast Bunch using this non-photo blue pencil. Now you'll be able to see it in this photo what it is, is the scanner won't pick this up. So when I go to scan this artwork in at black and white, the scanner will not pick up that pencil sketching. Stay with me. I'll explain more in a moment. Remember, what do I do first? I find my shapes. And I'll have a lot of shapes to deal with here because I have a lot of characters that I'm attempting to draw in here. So before I draw any of the details, I'm just going to draw the general shapes of these characters. And this is important to just draw the shapes now because they all have these arms and legs that will intertwine. I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough space for all of the characters to fit in right there. I thought, you know what? don't love where lunch lady ended up so i'm going to erase that some don't have to erase it all the way there we go okay and the breakfast bunch carrot hector so very quick loose sketching just trying to sort out where my characters are, how they're all going to fit together. And I feel pretty good about how they're fitting on the paper. So now that I've drawn in my loose shapes, the gesture sketches, if you remember from an earlier episode, I put a little plus sign on the head so I could sort out just where the character's eyes and noses and mouths will fit in so the eyes will go on this axis the nose will go on this axis eyes will go on this axis nose will go on that axis eyes nose eyes nose eyes nose Hair. I'll put their, the character's hair in. Lunch Lady has a big old perm. Betty has a, a shorter crop. Terrence has a neatly trimmed haircut. Hector has very messy hair. Dee has herself a little funky haircut. I'll draw their clothes.
And yes, I need to sharpen that pencil. And it is tricky trying to fit all of these characters into one scene when you have a, a big ensemble of characters and you're fitting them in. Okay, so now I feel pretty good about my sketch onto the final line work. So I have the Indie Ink. Remember, this spills on something, it stays there forever. I probably shouldn't have worn a new shirt the day that I was showing you how to use Indie Ink. Let's see how the rest of this goes, shall we? Uh, sometimes I might take the ink and dip it into a little palette. Something that I like to do because now with our, my drafting table is at, it's tilted a bit. Sometimes my kneaded eraser makes for a great stop for my ink. And I'm right-handed, so I should put the ink there on the right side. And I draw with a brush because you get a very dynamic line when you draw with a brush. Sometimes I will come in and draw some small details with my pen. Now, because I'm right-handed, I want to ink from left to right as best I can. Because if I ink on this side first and I move over here, I'm going to get ink everywhere. I'm going to get ink on my hand, which will smear on the paper and it'll be a mess. And the thing about drawing my comics with a brush is you get a very dynamic line when you draw with a brush. Apply a lot of pressure, that line will be very thick. Apply just the slightest bit of pressure, that line will be very thin. Let me very carefully put away this India ink. And now, if there were any other small details that I wanted to draw in, you know, I kind of wish that I had drawn the character's eyes. The eyes are tricky. So if there's ever something that I'm not satisfied, I'm not satisfied with how I drew Dee's eyes right there. Uh, so I'm going to draw them again right here. And then 
what we're going to do is this is going to get scanned into the computer and I could drop those eyes into place. Let me see if there's anything else I might want to fix. I have to be careful now. This ink is very wet. So, and I don't want to use a blow dryer. If I used a blow dryer now, the ink would go everywhere. It would go absolutely everywhere. Uh, don't love Hector's eyes so much there. So let me try this. Let me try drawing them like so. The eyes are so tricky. And if something is off about the eyes, everything is going to look weird. So you might be asking yourself, why is Jarrett drawing the eyes over here on this side of the paper? Well, I'm going to show you that in the next episode. The next episode will be about how I then take this artwork, scan it into my computer, and color it digitally. So now, let's go back to that non-photo blue pencil. When I scan this in, in the next episode the scanner will be unable to see this color pencil. So had I used graphite, a regular pencil with graphite, when I scan in at black and white, the computer is going to pick up this color. It will not pick up that non-photo blue. Here, let me zoom in for you there. You can get a closer look at that non-photo blue there. And... I don't have to erase all of those pencil marks now. So that saves me a lot of trouble. That also saves me a lot of time. Now I could have, if I had to erase all of this, even with this super fancy kneaded eraser, the ink might get smeared. I might rip the paper. So now we're going to let this dry. All right, so the next episode, we're going to be coloring in this on the computer. Now, we're making new episodes. My kids are going to be back. We're going to be doing more family draw time, but I'm also getting back to hosting some of my artist pals. We are going to be talking to Gail Galligan today. She is just the coolest ever. Uh, such a ridiculously cool person. She has... Uh, created the latest graphic novelizations in the Babysitter's Club graphic novel series. So she picked up the torch from Raina Telgemeier and check out her artwork. Her artwork is awesome. I love it. I, I love her style. I love what she's done with this to make it her own. So you might have seen that there is a Netflix show, a live action Babysitter's Club adaptation. It's really, really good. Uh, there's also a documentary about what the character Claudia Kishi meant to people. And Gail Galligan is interviewed. So you're going to meet Gail here on Draw Every Day with JJK. But I also want you to check out the important things she had to say about what this character meant to her growing up over on the Netflix documentary of... The Babysitter's Club series. It's it's not about the series, it's about the books. But anyways, let's hop on the old rotary phone that's connected to the internet through the phone line. We just take out our baby hands and use dial-up modem and an old Nintendo to call our friend Gil. Gail? Gail Galligan? Hey, welcome to Draw Every Day with JJK. Hi, Jarrett. Hi, everyone. My name is Gail Galligan, and I'm the cartoonist behind Babysitter's Club Volumes 5, 6, 7, and number 8, Logan Likes Marianne, which is coming out this fall. But I have to keep myself busy until then, and I thought it would be so much fun to visit all of you and show you how I would go about drawing one of my favorite Babysitter's Club characters. Let's go. All right, what are we working with today? I have a regular sheet of printer paper, a pencil, an eraser, because nobody's perfect, and a fine point Sharpie, but you can use whatever you happen to have at home, whether that's a fine point pen, a gel tip, a ballpoint, just something that can put a darker line over your pencil marks. Because what I want to do today is do a quick sketch and then draw on top of that and erase my pencil marks so I have something clean and finished at the end. 
So today, I am drawing Claudia from the Babysitter's Club. I absolutely loved her growing up, and I still do today. Um, she likes snacks, I like snacks, she loves art, and I really admire how confident she is. How she can wear whatever she wants and be really creative with her style and not worry about what other people think of her. I really admire that. So what I'm doing right now is I started off by drawing a circle for the head, right? And then I kind of went in and said, okay, I know that I want the cheek to be about here. And I know that I want her to be looking kind of forward at us. So what I did was I split that circle. I'm thinking about it as a round object, as a ball. And I want to divide it up so that I know where all the parts of the face are going to be. If she was looking to the left, I probably would have made that look a little bit more like this. If she was looking up, then I would have put it like that. So that I know, oh, the eyeballs are going to go here. The nose is going to go here. I'm just kind of making little guidelines for myself that I can erase later. And I personally find that really helpful. So now I know that her face looks like this. I've, I've kind of clarified over here. And I know that her ears are going to be about at that halfway point. So I'll draw them in here. And ears look a little bit shell-like. And the way that I cartoon that is just to make a little H. So the, the bottom of the H is her earlobe. And then there's a little shell here. So let's see. I have all of that. So I'm going to go in and add her signature Claudia bangs. And they just kind of swoop right over her forehead, don't they? Doo -doo. And then let's see, let's draw little circles where her eyes are going to go. And you can see they're going on either side of that dividing line I've made, which means her nose is going to go in between them. And we're, let's give her a bit of a smile. She's happy to be here. She started off as blank paper and now she's here. So let's see, I'm going to have her look over here. I'm just drawing little circles in here to show where her eyeballs are going to be. And then I'm going to give the top of her eyes a bit more thickness. Just so I can give a better indicator of where her eyes are, where she's looking. Then I'm drawing that highlight in the middle of her eye that I like to make. And kind of filling it in like that. Since this is just a sketch, I can get pretty loose with it. Um, if I make mistakes, it's okay because I'm going to erase them. This is just me figuring out where I want my finish lines to end up being. So I'm going around, adding more of her hair on the top of her head. And I think what I'm going to do is pull that up into a squishy bun. Doot. And let's see, her bun isn't perfectly round. It's kind of like squash at the top, and I think that's fun. And then the rest of her hair that's not in the bun can kind of fall down around here. And let's see. Doot. What should she wear? Because she's so creative, it's always fun deciding what Claudia is going to wear. And I think today I'm going to give her a sweater. So I'm going to put the neckline here, give it those little ribbing marks around the collar to show the texture of the sweater, and then draw a bunny on it because I am the artist and I can do whatever I want. And then I'm just drawing the top of Claudia today. So I'll give an idea of where her arms are and then leave it at that. And that is our starter sketch of Claudia Kishi from the Baby Series Club. Oh, wait, eyebrows. Let's just draw those in real quick. Now we're good. Okay, next step. All right, now that I have a pencil sketch of Claudia, what I'm going to do is go in with my Sharpie. And now that I have an idea of where I want my final lines to be, I'm just going to go in and draw over those. So I usually start right around here, but everybody starts drawing in a different place. It just depends on what is the most comfortable for you. There's no right or wrong there. So you'll notice I'm taking my time. I'm going around. I'm taking deep breaths. Because some people can ink very quickly, and I admire that. But if I go quickly... Sometimes I mess up. Sometimes my lines aren't as smooth. Sometimes they get a bit wiggly. So if you're one of those people like me, you might find it helpful to just take a breath, look at where you want your pen to go, and then let it slowly glide over there. And 
And when I'm working on comics, I'm doing this, but with a old fashioned dip pen. And that means that there is a little piece of metal that I dip into a bottle of ink. And then I put that on my paper and I do it over and over and over again until the page is done. And you can see that I'm going in and kind of fixing stuff as I go. I did make her ear a little bit small. And now that I'm going with my final lines, I can make that a little bit bigger, make it uh, look more like what I wanted it to look like. So here we are. We're gonna add those bangs. Gonna add that hint of the other ear. And you'll notice I'm adding a little bit of shadow to her neck here. And that's just to give an idea of where the light's coming from up here. So we've got all of that. I'm gonna give her a little bit of blush and maybe an earring. We're getting creative now. Now we're moving along to her shoulders. And you'll notice that I put the sweater not completely on the same line. That's just to show that it's a little bit thick. It has volume of its own, so it doesn't go directly along the shoulder line. And it's a little bit wrinkly here. Ah, the most important part, the bunny. I have two bunnies at home, so I'm a little bit biased. And Claudia's hair is dark and very shiny. So what I'm doing now is I'm filling in the dark spots with my Sharpie. And you'll notice I left some of it light colored and that's to say, hey, this is really, really shiny. So the light is reflecting off of it. And you might notice that with people you know as well. Where would you put those highlights? Oh, we're almost there. Um, just a little bit more. And let's see, I've got to add my signature. And for me, that is a G, G. Now there's only one thing left to do, isn't there? All right, so we've got our finished ink drawing of Claudia Kishi from the Baby Series Club. And now I get to do the fun part, which is get rid of all those pencil lines so I can pretend that I did it all the way in ink from the very beginning. And you'll notice that I'm spreading my fingers out like this and holding down the paper tight. That's because if I don't, sometimes I erase too hard and then accidentally crumple the paper. And maybe that's happened to you too. It is really sad when you've worked so hard on something and then end up kind of goofing it. But the nice thing is there'll always be another drawing to make, right? That's what I tell myself. Fun fact, I used to work as a comics assistant helping someone named Raina Telgemeier out on one of her graphic novels. And this is one of the things that I did for her. I would take her finished pages and then erase all of the pencil marks so that they looked nice and clean to scan in for final edits and colors. And it was really fun, but boy, did I get a workout. Oh, we're nearly there. And you'll notice that the parts where I drew harder with the pencil take a little bit more work to erase. I try to draw lightly, but I have a strong hand by nature and there's nothing wrong with that. It just means a bit more work. Here we go. And just a bit more around the ear. Okay, see? Doo -doo -doo. I call that good enough. Let's just give it a little brush off. Ta-da! There is a drawing of Claudia. Hope you like it. Thanks for having me, Jarrett. I hope all of you had a great time today, and I hope you continue to enjoy all of the creative, fun things you do. Whether you draw or read or write or a combination of all of those, just keep it up and enjoy exploring. It's so much fun. Thank you.
Well, Gail, I really appreciate you taking out the time uh, of your busy schedule. I, I know you have book deadlines too. Uh, we just all love your work and I know that you have some more stuff coming out. Also, uh, some of the stories that, that you're writing too. I heard about those. Anyways, Gail, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, you know what? We've talked about art. We've talked to our friend Gail. But I bet you're wondering, what about the pugs, Jarek? Did you forget about the pugs? And the answer is no, I did not forget about the pugs because it is time for Pug Cam. Thank you, Ralph and Frank. Uh, they are pugs as always. Now, people have been sending in the most amazing artwork by you young artists. I have so much of it that if I showed you all of it now, this next segment would take two hours. So I'm going to, I'm going to sprinkle it out over the next number of episodes. Check out the wonderful, incredible, awesome artwork that you all sent in. We're going to start with a, with a selection today, and we're going to show every single thing that came in. I'm so glad you're back. I'm so happy to be with you again. Welcome back to Draw Every Day with JJK. We'll see you soon. Keep drawing. Please click like and subscribe and keep drawing. See you soon.